Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on the Goof Channel on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Today we're going to be doing something fun. We're going to be trying to um, load two textures at once and kind of meld them together into one texture in the fragment shader. Uh, so just before we start going, let me just go ahead, go into our YouTube to show where you have your little cat and paste another picture in here. Preferably a P PNG image, it doesn't really matter but something that supports alpha values. But just go ahead and do that, put it in there, and uh, you'll get a, you have two textures here basically. You have a cat or whatever you want, and a container. Now I can't really give you these in a way unless I kind of load them off onto GitHub, but uh, whatever. For now, just take whatever two pictures you want, Im or images or whatever you want to call it. So there you go, just paste them into your images thingy. Go ahead, go up here. Now remember how we did our texture before. What we did was we created a texture, we generated it in the last video, some memory location for that, bound it to a texture 2D in the 0th texture unit, the first one. Then we set all the settings and we kind of created it and then we unbound it, just created it in the background and it's, it's stored. So we can bind it anytime and we can use it. Now what was important was this texture unit. So once we want to draw with a texture, before we bind our vertex array, with the model and all the points and everything, uh, in our case the rectangle, we want to bind a texture. And we bind a texture to a texture unit. And the shader in turn, the sampler 2D, is basically like an integer you store here, like it is defaulted to zero. We still send a zero into it here, but it's default zero. So you actually don't use this if you just have one texture. You don't need to use that. I don't know what I just did. Okay, this. You don't have to send it in if you just have one texture because it will default to zero. But the shader, the sampler, looks, it peeks into the texture unit that is active to see if there's a texture bound there. Now, in our case, we bound this texture to another, to an active texture unit. This will go and look in that texture unit and see, oh, there's a texture there. And then we can get, we can sample pixel colors from that texture. So at this position, this pixel position in this rectangle, we want to grab a little pixel, the color in that pixel, from this texture unit, whatever is bound at texture unit 0 here. And then we'll multiply that with our own color. So what we got from that was just a cat that had a beautiful rainbowish color, all right? Because I, we multiplied it with our beautiful colors here. Now what you want to do to get two textures running, remember, we can't bind two textures to one texture unit. It will override. So we need to use two texture units. Now this is really ugly that I'm, I'm doing this in this way, that I'm copy pasting everything. We don't have a texture function or anything in it. But in, in your applications, you're gonna do all this in a kind of a texture function, creating a texture, loading it, everything. I'll show you in the end of the video how it can look with my other project where I have everything divided up nicely. And my idea is to do this as tutorials where I just kind of paste stuff here and and just work with it anyhow, like any way possible, as soon as quick as possible, instead of putting it to functions. But later on, I'll have a series with examples where I'll do make different programs in 3D. And then you'll see, we'll split everything up and stuff. And I'll, I'll make a tutorial video on that as well. But whatever, we're going to make another texture. So we can't use the same uh, variables as for this one. So we everywhere we're gonna add a one so this is image width one image height one image one image width one one just be really careful with this that you don't leave anything out because you might get some issues one 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 this is what I hate with copy pasting sometimes uh, image width one image height one image one and loading failed unbind texture and clear the image data for image one. Remember, be really careful with this and thorough. So if I missed anything here, I'm sorry, I don't think I did. It should be fine. Now, the only thing I'm gonna change is image one is gonna load our box.png. I think that's what it was called. Container.png, sorry. Container.png, all right? Now, if I chose to, chose to just use one texture unit, I'm gonna bind my new texture to this texture unit instead. So in our shader, this texture unit sampler is going to go look in that texture unit zero. Well, what is bound here? After we activated this, we bound a texture. That means it bound to this one. 
it's going to find our new box texture, texture 1 instead, and it's going to sample from that. So then we'll get a rainbowish box instead, hopefully. Yep, we got a rainbowish box. So that's how that works, all right? Now, if I want to send both textures in, change this back, then we have to activate another texture unit, 1. All right, this is another texture unit, and we're going to send another texture into that texture unit. Um, we're going to bind it in there. And what happens then is we can still sample here from texture 0. Nothing is going to change for this shader right now. Our image is still going to be the cat now. But if we want the other texture in here, we need to make another, excuse me, another sampler for which we'll send an integer 1 instead. This one we sent already here in the uniform. We sent a 0 here to our texture 0 uniform, which is this one in the shader. We need to make another one and we need to tell it that, okay, this texture sampler is going to check the texture unit 1 instead of 0. So we'll send a 1 to texture 1 or whatever I call it here, this name here. We're going to put that name in here and we're going to send it a 1 using this GL uniform 1i, one integer. We want to send it to the graphics card uniform here. So now we, this uniform works. If I change this to texture 1 here now, all right, it's going to use our box because we sent it the box. If I if I use texture 0, the zeroth texture unit, it's going to use whatever is bound there, the cat. So to actually combine those two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, copy paste that, and I'm going to multiply it with texture unit 1. 0, texture unit 1, that pixel multiplied by this pixel, multiplied by the color. So we're going to get a mishmash of a containerish looking cat. All right, with all the wood and everything. So that's how that works. And everything around is black because the alpha values of the cat are 0 out here. And we're going to multiply the alpha values of the box at those positions. So all these alpha values here are going to be multiplied in the box like this and they're going to become zero as well. So it's going to become transparent in, in the back as well. So that's kind of how it works. So to show you that more clearly, what I can do is I can just add these plus and then you'll see that the box is still, I'll remove the color thing for now. And you'll see that the box and the cat kind of melded in together like this. All right. So that's kind of how that works. I hope you understood that well, because that is texture units, and it's sometimes it might be hard to understand. But just remember that these are basically like inter integer values, and this says, well, which texture unit should I sample from? Zero, whatever is bound to zero, will sample from that, and this is bound to one since I sent it in here, the value one here. This is gonna sample from texture unit one, whatever is bound there. All right, so that's how it works. Uh, in the next video, we're going to try to rotate this beautiful cat around and use different matrices and stuff. So follow me on that one. Uh, I guess the ending of the series is going to be trying to split everything up into nice functions and classes. I'll try to do that if I, um, if I don't just make a new series on that. Uh, but for now, I hope this is okay. The full code and stuff, I wish I could, I could give it to you, but all I can, I can do this. I can go up here. And I'm going to show you everything. Now just pause the video wherever you feel that you need the code. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and show this to you kind of slowly here. And just so you have all the source code. So you don't have to worry about that. And I love that you guys give me support. And you guys are always there waiting for new videos and stuff. I never expected that. And I'm really, really thankful and grateful. Uh, so I hope you're learning something from this series. And just keep learning. Don't don't give up because the more you practice, the more the easier stuff will get in 3D. It's really a lot of take in and it's really tough sometimes. But once you get it, uh, you don't really you know, you don't really forget it because it's once you get the basics, it's not really that hard to remember. So this is all the code I could show you until that we have until now. Um, yeah, keep learning. Thanks for the support. Take care. And yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in the next video, all right? Bye-bye.